What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again. Today I have a less than $1,000 gaming PC build for 2019. Now, I didn't get a lot of benchmarks, but we got a bunch of synthetics, everything that we could fit in, as this was a quick turnaround one day build, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's just dive right in, starting with the parts. So first of all, one of the things that you can knock right off of this is the Antec Prism. This is a kit that is ARGB. It includes the controller, two light strips, and three RGB LED fans. And I really like the kit for cleaning up a build and I really do highly recommend it for the cost however if you take this off you're definitely getting closer to that $900 price tag but as built down below you're going to be seeing about $977 on Amazon in the US as of right now. The case we went with was the Antec Dark Fleet case you can pick them up for about $63 on Amazon depending on which retailer you go with and they're a great case they have the PSU shroud cover they have room for expanding into water cooling later on if you would like to and it's a it just overall pretty solid for the price now the one that I have here is an older model and they have recently updated them to include a glass side panel the one that's in this video actually has a plastic side panel which I'm not a huge fan of but I do have a review of some of the newer series. There's the Dark Avenger as well as the Dark Fleet uh, RGB that I have uh, built the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 mod in. And so you have a lot of options in the Antec field and they are definitely worth taking a look at now as their cases have improved significantly over the past couple of years. Now for power, we're powering everything with a Corsair RM850X. It's a fully modular power supply and way overkill for this build. However, this all comes from his upgrade uh, or this piece does. We wanted to reuse the power supply because it's a really nice one, obviously. And previously he was running uh, two uh, GTX 770s in SLI. And yes, I did make the trade for that. So I have some 770s now that we'll get to play with here in the near future. His old build, uh, to give you an idea, was those 770s in SLI with a 3570K, I believe it was, overclocked, of course. And it was, it was kind of getting a little long in the tooth but they were good parts uh, we didn't want to throw out the power supply at that point you could knock some money off here because with with of course the power efficiency of the modern day parts you're only going to need about 650 watts probably for this build or even less potentially and you'll see why as we go through the rest of the parts next we have the crucial p1 one terabyte nvme ssd it's a pretty good price right now for an nvme protocol ssd and i highly recommend it you can check it out with all of the affiliate links for this build will be down in the description below it performs well however it's not going to be as fast as like four lane for pcie lane nvme but it's definitely noticeable improvement over a standard solid state drive over sata getting to the good parts we have the motherboard which is going to be the msi b450 tomahawk this motherboard is pretty much been a go-to for Ryzen for a while. It has the right features including RGB features as well as the USB 3.0 headers. It, it supports pretty much everything you could think of and it's just a really solid board for around $100. The processor we went with here was the Ryzen 5 2600X. Now I did recommend just the 2600 and we are going to overclock it. However, for $20 more, the, the user here, an old friend of mine was like, I'm just going to get the 2600X. And I was like, go for it. So we didn't even overclock this at all. And you'll see the benchmarks, they performed pretty well right out of the box with the stock cooler. This thing was hitting 4.2 gigahertz. Amazing. So to back that up, we have 3200 megahertz memory. Make sure you get 3200 megahertz memory and two sticks of them for Ryzen builds. This one in particular is the Corsair LPX and it's 16 gigabytes, two eight gigabyte sticks. And like I said, clocked nice and high. The XMP profile applied right away. No fit or fuss there about it. Next, we have the Zotac Gaming GTX 1660 Ti. This is my second experience with them and I prefer the Zotac over the EVGA 
that we have laying around somewhere around here. And the reason for that is it's a dual slot, not a triple slot card, so it doesn't take up as much space. And it has a dual fan design. Like, like I said, in that price range of like the 269 to 279, the Zotac seems to be a little bit more palatable in my opinion for price to performance and features. Finally, we had cleaned it all up with some V1 Tech sleeved cable extensions. You can check them out through my affiliate link that will take you to the V1 Tech website where you can get sweet custom back plates and PSU shrouds and GPU brackets and just pretty much everything under the sun. They've been featured now even on Linus Tech Tips and they are doing really well. Huge shout out to Hassan over there. He's, he's been a kind of a long time show buddy. I, I see him at the shows and hang out with him, get some food and stuff. Super nice guy, super great company, good products, and we'll clean up your build with those cable extensions. So things you can adjust here to reduce costs is gonna be, of course, the cable extensions. You're gonna also be able to reduce the cost by knocking off the Antec Prism for those good looks. And you can knock down your power supply here to like a 650 watt and get you under hundred bucks for that and get you well under $800 for this build and have some pretty good performance. Let's get into benchmarks. I did want to run Cinebench R20 and I'll have to post the score for you later because I did screen cap it. However, I did not move that screen cap to a cloud save. Luckily, all of the benchmarks or the rest of these benchmarks are cloud savable and I did upload them so I have them here for you now. In Time Spy it scored a fantastic 6,365 so that's going to be the 1440p test in DirectX 12. Now if we bump down to a good old standard we have Fire Strike which is going to be a 1080p uh, DirectX 11 uh, benchmark and it scored a 14,620 details should be up on the screen for the specific GPU and CPU scores if you need to take a look at those and finally the latest and greatest benchmark out there right now the superposition 4k optimized we scored a 5,126 staying pretty steadily at 4k above 30 FPS so this system is definitely performing well and one of the more favorite ones I've done uh, over the past uh, few, uh, probably few months because I've been doing a lot of custom water-cooled builds, a lot more high-end stuff and so on. So to get to play with more of this is the budget concerned ones I think is beneficial. So if you guys are interested in any of the parts, like I said, they'll be in the description below. I hope this covered everything you need to know about the benchmarks and all of that. Like I said, the Ryzen 5 2600X was performing fantastically and with XFR just going straight to 4.2 gigahertz I'd love to play with some overclocking on one of those later albeit with uh, more time we don't have one in hand like I said this is built for someone else as far as the future goes I do also have the option of playing now with those 770s which should be pretty fun as far as the GTX 1660 Ti, it didn't seem to pre present any issues or stuttering across all of the synthetic benchmarks. I'll wait till he gets home and report if there's something wrong with, uh, with it or anything crazy. On my personal 1660 Ti, which is the EVGA model, I've been having some hitching here and there uh, about every 20 minutes in Tom Clancy's The Division 2, but it doesn't seem to really uh, be a problem in any other title with the 1660 Ti, and I'm waiting for a driver update before we really drop the full review of that card here on this channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe and the little bell, and we'll get moving on down the road. Once again, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday.